Welcome back to Stu Structures. We're here for video eight in building the freight house from Grafton, West Virginia on the B&O Railroad. So stay tuned. Okay, I am Mark Stewart. This is Stu Structures and I am your favorite Faro Equestrianologist. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd like to get some of my steam engines out and work more on the ferro equestrian type of thing a little more. Uh, I haven't worked on rolling stock or anything in a while. I, I, I enjoy specialty trains. Um, I mean, I, 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 I like to model a specific place in time. That's why I'm building all these buildings for Graft in West Virginia. And it's the B&O Railroad. It was really a unique hub on the B&O Railroad. Uh, but you know, I also will model pretty much the uh, schedules that ran through there. So, you know, at one point there was 28 passenger trains a day that went through Grafton and they all, inter well not all of them, but a lot of them interchanged cars between trains going in different directions. And uh, so the yard downtown that I'm modeling all these buildings for had a lot of passenger car uh, tr uh, stuff going on. And then there was the regular freight action and the extras. But the one thing I enjoy as much as anything else are specialty trains. Uh, I started putting a World War II uh, military train together with all the armor, with Sherman tanks and howitzers and half tracks and you know, deuces and jeeps and all you know just all that kind of thing for an armament division uh, a lot of these divisions would have moved through Grafton on flat cars going to the coast to be go, you know, shipped overseas and there were times in the country when the, these units were moved from place to place in the country when they thought there was an imminent threat of invasion or something like that on a coastal region so anyway I, you know, another thing I model is uh, you know, circus train. I've been putting the one together for a long time, and I've got a lot of work to do on it. But uh, you know, it's a nice train. And then, you know, and then the freight stuff. I enjoy the old wooden reefers. Um, you know, so I've got a long train of wooden reefers. So maybe eventually we'll get into some individual shows on just you know that type of thing as well, and, and specialty trains. I haven't seen a lot of that on the internet either. But in any case, we're here to work on buildings and not all these things I've been talking about. And uh, we're going to continue with the freight station today. So let's just get into it and see what all directions we can take and uh, how many things we're going to work on in this video. And let's get started. In the last video, uh, you know, I showed you how I was going to make all these little uh, stair step type platforms that are on these columns of the building and you can see there's not one on the corner column and they're not on the ends but on every other column down both the front and back the long sides of this building these stair steps you know are there to support the overhang and roof that are on the platforms so I came back and hand made these like I explained in my last uh, video and I just made plenty of them. Uh, you know I've got a couple extras here a couple of them just didn't look as good uh, so I just made a couple extras and I'll have them if I need them. But then I came back and uh, you know mounted all these and then you know in this shot I just have them on this first side where I have the archways and stuff done because I I want to go ahead and do the brick arches and stuff before I put these on so that the templates you know will will work so I went ahead and did the archways on this other side then with the templates and then came back you know well here I you know I did the these end before that you saw uh, and then uh, I came back and did the uh, platform the step out platforms on this other side as well and uh, you know now we're to the point where we have all the archways and everything done so all the brickwork there is kind of finished so the next thing we need to start on is this vent structure in the end and you know these louvers at angles like this in that arch are a little complicated to do so you know there's not good pictures of this the other picture was a little better than this one but basically I think what I'm going to do is uh, just use the styrene to make the louver out of similar to the, what I did on the other building but I'm just going to make a square louver that sits right behind that opening and then use the trim on the brick to kind of meet the louvers so I can just basically make a square louver 
and I'm going to use these styrene pieces that I showed you, the angle pieces like I did the louver in the previous building. I'm just going to sawtooth cut edges and then I'm going to come together and form that into a square that's just slightly larger than the opening that I'm going to mount it behind so that I make sure the louvers are completely covering the surface. Then I come back with all those uh, slats that I cut from that evergreen styrene and just start to add slats into each one of those sawtooth. And I can move them up and down in that tooth just a little bit so I can make sure that all the lower edges of those are all even as they come together all the way across, all the way down the louver so that they're all nice and, you know, good looking. And then uh, it'll just fit in behind that opening. Now the next thing we're going to play with are, are these windows. I'm just going to experiment with this right now. I'm not going to add all these in, but I want to make sure what I have in mind is going to work. Now there's no windows actually made that work this way, but Grantline has these windows I think that I can make work. So what I'm going to do is take one of these and then I'm going to cut it in half and cut that center piece out that fits between the two sashes. And then I'm going to put it behind the open window and cut the arch in each of those little uprights. And then you know, I'm going to have to file down the sides because it's just a hair wider than the openings that I made. But here you can see it fits in there really good. The top edge I'm going to have to come back and dress up. So what I'm going to do is use this other evergreen strip and just add the rest of the edge of the window uh, frame on the top of that once I have them glued into place. Yeah, now I'm really antsy to come back and start painting brick. So, you know, I'm using this uh, brick red from Nicole's. It's just a, an acrylic water-based paint. You need to make sure you clean your surfaces really good so there's no oils or anything on the plastics or that this doesn't adhere real good. But as long as you do that, you know, this really works well. So, you know, it's going to take a couple of coats. This is just the first coat on everything. And, you know, it starts to tone down all the different collars and the plastic. And then I come back and put a second coat on this. And, you know, it, it's starting to look really good. I can see some cracks and things that I need to fill. Um, but basically, it's starting to look like the building I want it to be. So, uh, you know, I'm happy with this at this point. Okay, so there's another segment of Stu Structures. Uh, the building is starting to come along pretty good now. It's nice to get the paint on it, because especially with all these different colors of uh, things that I'm adding on to the building, it's hard to get an, a really a good idea of what it's going to look like till you get some paint on it. Uh, it also reveals a lot of cracks in the open areas. Uh, I did drag as I was putting, I've got two layers of paint on this to this point, and I put a third layer just on the brick arches and stuff. Since they were white, they're going to need a little bit more. Uh, but as I was painting all that, I was trying to back drag some paint into cracks and start getting some fill work done. Uh, some of them are just very noticeable, some of them are not so bad. Uh, but you know, some of them I, I really like to fill. So I think I'm going to come back with my little needle uh, uh, thing that I've made to uh, add glue into tiny places and uh, fill a few of these cracks manually that way. I uh, still have a little bit of stuff to do on you know this last end and get a third coat on it. And you know I didn't notice till I was done. I just you know I was antsy to get paint on it. So I got a little bit ahead of myself and you know this uh, where the louver goes in this end, I forgot to do the brick arch over it as well. So I've got the brick cut. I'm gonna have to just scratch a little paint off and come back and add the uh, brick archway over that whole uh, louver panel area as well. Uh, but now we're to the point, you know, we can start looking at the second uh, story. You know, I've been talking about that for the last couple of weeks, but, uh, you know, we're ready to start putting that in there. And I need to get some more structural support in here anyway. And by adding that wall in here, it'll start to give me some structural support. And also on the end of that wall, then we can go ahead and do another you know, roof support and a couple of others in here so we can be thinking about the roof as we get the second story building built. Also on the under these doors, you know, the, the floor 
area that comes out through these doors actually the concrete seal sets out just a little bit beyond this wall so I have to come back and put filler pieces in there and then a brick face on that and then you know a ledge on cap on top of it that would have been the concrete area uh, ledge that set on top of that and I, you know, I would like to go ahead and open a couple of these doors and add some wood floor, or maybe in this end or something, uh, so that I could show, you know, some men with hand carts and that type of thing, and add some detail, maybe a light on the inside, uh, so that you could see in a little bit. This will be closer to the edge of uh, the layout eventually, uh, more so than what the beanery would have been. It was nice to get exterior lights on the beanery, but I didn't you know add any to the interior I did put some floors in that building so later on if I decide to I could come back and take the roofs off since they're removable and add a couple of interior rooms uh, but this one you know you have that embankment that sets up behind the building so it sits down kind of low but I'm thinking you know you'll be able to kind of see in this end of it with that overhead bridge coming in here really this won't be visible and you have a real wide overhead out here with the platform and the and the roof over the platform but this area here you will be able to maybe see in it a little bit so it might be able to just uh, go ahead and do a little bit of work there to make that possible you know we'll see as as, as I go on with this uh, but I'm pleased with it the way it's coming along to this point you know it's starting to look like the building I'm trying to model it it's very satisfying when you start to get to that point where you can see what you're really wanting to do is getting to where you want it to be uh, so in any case I'm gonna let this one go at this next week um, you know I am in, going to be in Virginia I have a personal video that I'm gonna put out that kind of explains a little bit about me and my life and where I'm coming from so you know maybe it'll help you understand uh, how t time consuming my life is right now moving my nursery and everything especially to a temporary place and I'm gonna have to move it again in a couple of years um, so anyway that'll be out next week and then the building will continue the following week anyway uh, you know I've had this personal stuff on tape for a while and uh, you know it's, uh, a couple of times I've had people ask me about me you know and I, I don't really get too personal into this stuff even though I've hinted at some of the things that are going on in my life that are complicating the situation uh, but in any case that video maybe will shed some light on my life and where I'm coming from and uh, you know then the following week like I said we'll be back with the building so um, you know I appreciate you coming back and sharing this time with me um, you know it's it's nice to have this information out there a lot of people would really like to know some of this stuff and you know if nothing else how not to do things uh, you know I experiment with a lot of things some work some don't um, and it just gives people ideas of directions to head in is what I'm after so I'm hoping you're jumping out there and taking some of these ideas and scratch building a building of your own uh, subscribe to the channel if you're not already there's a little red button below this tip subscribe just push that and next to it is a little bell icon if you touch that bell then you'll be notified each week when a new segment of stew structures comes out and then you can keep up with the builds as we go we have a lot of buildings to build I have some other things I'm gonna throw in from time to time and uh, you know hopefully make it an interesting channel that I hope you appreciate so, uh, you know, drag out your trains, play a little, scratch build some buildings, and happy model railroading.